Today, I'm having a chat with my sister, Annabelle. She is one of my heroes. I've looked up to her for so long, and I want to ask her a little bit about how she forms her priorities, how she forms the vision for her life, and how she's living life to the full like her heroes. Let's get into the conversation. So, Annabelle, thanks for being here, first off. You're welcome. I'm very excited. I think a lot of people that know you would say, that you make great life decisions and that you're living life to the full. That warms my heart. <laughs> Can you start off by telling me a little bit about when you have those big life decisions, whether it's a new job or a different uni degree, because I know you've had to make those decisions. How have you answered those questions and come to those decisions? I definitely think that the best thing that you can do is know that there is no one right answer and there's no one right way of doing things and making no decision is the worst thing that you can possibly do. <laughs> That's a great point. I think so many people get caught up with analysis paralysis in their decision-making process. And one of the reasons that they make the wrong decision, perhaps, is just because they've made no decision. <laughs> if they'd made either decision, it would have been better than making no decision. You're a Christian. Can you expand a little bit about how trusting God's plan helps with that process? Yeah, absolutely. I'm always going to end up exactly where I need to be at the right time. So it doesn't actually matter which route I take to get there. I'm always going to be exactly where God needs me to be at the time that he wants me to be there. And knowing that takes off so much of the pressure because even if I make a decision that really forces me into a rough patch, I go, that's okay because God obviously needs me to be in a rough patch to teach me something. Can you expand a bit on that idea of perspective for us? Because I know that that's a, a big thing for you and sort of just looking at, I guess, how your life might be different depending on which outcome you choose in the, in the long run. Can you talk a bit about how that plays into your process? Mindset is a really important thing to have. Every single challenge that you face is going to have a, have a positive or a negative outcome, completely depending on your mindset, actually. Because if you have a mindset like mine where you go, everything is happening for a reason, I'm going to learn from the rough patches, then you actually come out the other side better, stronger and more improved. And I know it's a lot easier said than done because obviously like going through the rough patches is rough. I don't want to discount that. But if people have a mindset where they go, this is going to destroy me, this is not where I wanted to be in life, this was not my plan, then they're actually going to spiral and things are going to get worse and their decisions are going to get more and more difficult. Sometimes people think they have to make a big shift in life to feel better about life or to live life to the full, uh, but actually they just have to change their mindset towards what they're currently doing. 100% because your mindset can be, can be shaped by so many things. So if you let society and other people dictate your mindset, you're going to be making all of your decisions for other people. And you're not really going to be happy with any of them, quite frankly. So you've got to have a really good, hard sit down, think about it with just yourself and go, what is my actual aim here? And how can I take steps to achieve that aim? Because if I know the direction that I want to go in and the direction that I'm eventually aiming for, all of my decisions just have to be ones that align with that. So for example, I currently work retail and I'm 19 and I work with people that are 17. Now, does that mean that I'm two years behind where I should be? Absolutely not. I love working retail. It works so well for me and it's a way of getting an income that I really enjoy. You've really got to be thinking about whether or not you're making these decisions with your best interests at heart or whether you're just letting the expectations of society or your parents or your boss or anyone around you dictate where you're going in life. Perhaps the most important thing is just to have that vision of what you want your life to look like, to have that knowledge and to understand why you're doing things to, to contribute to that. So can you talk a little bit then about how you formed that vision for your life? Obviously, like. When you have a vision, it's really easy to answer these questions of does this contribute or not? But if you don't have the vision, how do you make the vision? Learning from experience. All of the mistakes that you make, learn from them. But more so, all of the mistakes that other people make, learn from them. I definitely would recommend just chatting to those around you and seeing what they regret, actually. 
ask them what they would have done differently when they were making big life decisions and learn from that. And you say at the very beginning of this, you said that you really admire me and that I'm your hero and that means a lot to me, but you also are my hero. Aww. And you know what? I have done everything right in your eyes because I learned from your mistakes. You did. I took what you regret because you told me and I made sure to not do that. <laughs> but I also was just very intentional about how I spent my time. You have to have those uncomfortable conversations with your, yourself. You actually have to sit down with yourself and go, what is important to me? How do I want to spend my time? Will I regret spending my time doing this or will I find it really valuable? And I had that sit down conversation with myself before I went into year 11 and 12 because I had that conversation with you about what you regret. And so I sat down and I thought, okay, we're not gonna make the same mistakes that Tim made. We're going to make sure we've got our top three priorities and see where school and marks and education falls in my priorities. So I sat down and I went, okay, God, my relationship with God is number one first priority. So if I ever find myself skipping church to study or because I'm too tired from studying, I'm doing something wrong and something has to change because that means my priorities are out of whack. Uh, number two was my relationship with friends and family. Again, if I sit at my desk and I don't, and all I'm doing is studying and I don't see people, I don't go out and see my friends and spend time with them or I don't sit around the dinner table with my family, then I'm doing something wrong. You know, that was very important to me as well. And then my third one was my health, physical and mental health. If I, again, was just really causing myself some mental grief and strain because I was stressing horrifically about some, getting a few extra marks, you know, like I, just realized that I would be very happy with a 70 if it meant that I didn't have to spend another 48 hours trying to get a 90 on an assessment. So I think having those conversations with yourself is really important to get your priorities. And then again, once you've got them, make decisions that ensure that you keep those priorities. And if something is ever not working, if you do find that you're skipping out on church to study or something, you just have to be so real with yourself and so honest with yourself and say, I'm doing something wrong, something's got to change. Yeah, that's such great advice. And I know that you've, over the years, you've talked to a lot of different people and you've had conversations with a lot of different people, kind of like this, and you've looked up to a lot of different people, and I'm sure that all those people have contributed to your vision. I know that, like, at one point, you looked up to, like, Finn from Stoked, uh, the character from our TV show. Yes. You very much based a lot of your decision-making around what would Finn do, and having that that guide there. Can you talk a little bit about those people that you might have looked up to in the past and how those, they've contributed to the vision that you've had? I was watching Stoked with you, and I saw the character Finn. I really admire her confidence, and I really admire her work-life balance. And those were the two main things at that point in my life that I really wanted. I had a really good think about how I can make decisions that will make me more confident and how I can make decisions where I do have that work-life balance. So I started doing things like reading self-help books and learning more and trying to gain more knowledge on how to get your priorities, how to get confident. One of the best ways that you can become more confident, if that's your thing, is to get out of your comfort zone. So everything that scares you, do it. You have to. You just simply have to. Because once you actually do it, A, it's gonna be way less scary the next time you do it. And B, you might actually get into that situation and realize, oh, it wasn't even scary to begin with. And I was just getting all up in my head about it. That happens so often. So often. And people get so stifled because of it. And then it stops them from becoming the person that they want to be. And I've seen you grow in your confidence and in your ability to get out of the comfort zone so much over the last few years. Annabelle, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for chatting and sharing your wisdom. You are so welcome. I had a really good time. I love seeing you being your heroes, living your best life and 
and learning from you. So thank you so much for being my hero and keep crushing it. Thank you. I really hope that it helped. I really hope that someone takes something away from this video. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got some great value from that conversation. It's so awesome to talk to Annabelle and to gain wisdom from the way that she's been living her life and being her heroes. Perhaps some of the key takeaways is just to make sure that you have that vision of your life. Take some time to think about it. Think about your priorities. Think about how you want your life to look because then you have something to evaluate your decisions from. You have something that you can assess the decisions you're making against and to therefore see if you're actually living in accordance with the thing you want to be doing with your life. Let me know in the comments what value you got from this conversation, what things you've learned, and what things I should ask Annabelle in the next conversation. If you want to ask Annabelle more questions, let me know, put them in the comments. We'll do another video, we'll do a part two, we'll learn more from her. But for now, that's going to be all. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being your heroes, and I'll see you soon.